This is basically the seating position. <laughs> yeah? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit leaky, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Now, as you guys know, we do like a good project car on this channel, preferably one that's been bought sight and seen off the internet and with some pretty high mileage. The more recent example of this was the AJ TTRS, which I got for less than £7,000 and ultimately sacrificed itself for a 490,000 mile Volkswagen Caddy. Yes, that still does sound insane when I say it out loud. Well, anyway, here's the latest edition, a 2008 Volkswagen Passat R36 Estate, finished in Biscay Blue. I managed to get this magnificent thing for £5,946.40 to be exact. And check this, it was from the exact same location as the TTRS BCA car auction in Bedford. It's got 189,000 miles on the clock and it's got no MOT, but it's literally a blue R36 estate for half price. You never really see these drop below the £10,000 mark in this particular spec and configuration. So I was pretty chuffed. That's a fancy key, isn't it? You found another one then, Tej? Yeah, just about. <laughs> Is it like yeah. a Mark V? Yeah. yeah. This whole panel's at, well, Mark V. Apart from all the elbows in there. It must have quite a sharp elbow, isn't it? Here's the interior. It's got this mix of leather and Alcantara, which is quite nice. Go on. Oh, has he got rear heated seats? <laughs> no way. That is insane, that is. Look. Yeah, it's got the Mark V scroll wheel in the back. <laughs> Silver headlining, I think all of them have that though. You had to see a B6 Passat with black headlining. Let's pop that open. Does that work? 3.6 litre VR6. With the same airbox as a TTRS. Yeah, well, the TTRS copied this actually. Oh, yeah, fair enough, fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just looks like it wants to go on the Autobahn, doesn't it? Aren't these electric? Oh, no, it, it has oh. a go. Oh, I see. <laughs> you can see what you could have had. Yeah, got <laughs> this is when they used to do this. Throw mats. Nice boot lining. Look at that press. Oh, Venge, it's like a mini Phaeton, isn't it? Full size spare. Uh, it's got an ammonite in the boot. Is there a hole in the door? Oh, that's where you put a, put, uh, put an umbrella. Basically, a phantom as well. That doesn't do anything. Maybe the car needs to be on. Paperwork in the car that you spotted, Tej. Uh, so far, no. <laughs> Nothing in there. Put that in. I see you stuck there, so. I'm gonna have to either what make my legs shorter or yeah, fix it. Box spot there. That works. That's the card holder. I think that almost the cup holder. Two they're, cord just, holders. they're just both card holders. <laughs> this, these are just on five. The heated seat controls. That's nice. So the seat works on that side, but this yeah, one, my knees are. It was just all the way up. So it's hard to find an R36 actually needs work because most of them are just. Well, fancy to be honest. It's got a rocket cover leak a little bit. Yeah, it's a bit leaky, isn't it? Yeah. Right, more my truth. See the colour of it. There, there is oil, which is a good sign. There we go, good. That's beautiful, man. That. Did hear a bit of like a sucking motion on startup where it was picking up the oil. You could tell there was a slight delay. We haven't got any paperwork, unfortunately, in the car, but that's not really a problem at this price range. See the potential in it, it already looks amazing as it does. You imagine all tidied up, wheels refurbed, nice tyres matching all around. Maybe sort out a bit of the uh, paintwork on the following side. It's been on for a bit, so before anyone gets worried. folks it's got a reverse cam as well <laughs> the heated seats coming on you know i think the heated seats coming on yeah is it try and move the seat because you can see it's warmed up now <laughs> that is in like the, the the electric adjustments warmed up hold the camera there just give people a look at what this looks like from there this is basically the seat position <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> so you can tell um i'm obviously very comfortable in this grand touring car it's nice that there's always a mark 5 gti wherever i go it's like i could never escape them that's a 54 plate as well axx this looks like the same body shops painted the back on that as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is 50 shades of blue this one like, it's got pandas as well i down shifted to first yeah we're gonna get written off of this c-class over here so many buttons getting pressed yeah i know they all work as well apart <laughs> from the one that uh, to actually sit in the car <laughs> that's a powerful engine isn't it
Despite the slightly cramped driving position, the car made it back to the unit with no issues. This was around a two hour drive, so it was a pretty good test. As per usual, I did obtain a full vehicle report before bidding on this car from the guys at Car Vertical, who also are the sponsors for today's video. Now, if you're not already familiar with them, they've been supporting us for a long time now, and essentially it's a website that allows to obtain a full check on any car. All you gotta do is enter the registration or the VIN. These reports can tell you whether a car has had its mileage tampered with, whether it's been stolen, whether it's got any accident damage, or if it's got any outstanding in finance. Thankfully, the Passat came back clear on all fronts, so there's nothing to worry about. However, I have had instances where this wasn't the case, such as the 123D donor car last year. I wasn't actually aware that that was a category and write-off until I got the report, and there was even photos of it at Salvage Auction to show exactly what happened. Ultimately, the situation wasn't too bad, as the damage was very minor, as you can see here. But what it did do was it allowed me to get a better deal, as even the seller wasn't aware of the category and status. So there we are, folks. That's car vertical in a nutshell. Nice and easy to use. I will definitely save you some hassle down the line. Now I have got a little incentive. If you go and click the link in my description, then use the code TRH. What that'll do is it'll save you 10% off your next report. But as always, big thanks to Car Vertical for their continued support of the channel. Let's have a good look at this Passat. Now before continuing with the underside inspection, I hooked up the car to VCDS to scan for any fault codes. The car did throw up a fair few, but most of them are voltage related. So I imagine it did have a dead battery at some point. However, the engine section did have a few genuine ones that it said had been reset a number of times in regards to the EVAP, throttle and the MAF. Right, okay, so we've got the R36 on the lift ready to go. We're gonna do a full inspection, tell you what's good and what's bad. It's a bit weird how the owner got rid of it just before it was due an MOT after having it for 10 years. Now, the only advisories I could see on the older reports were for the lower control arm bushes. Now, in terms of a build plan for the R36, we're gonna take more of a restoration style route. It's something I wanted to do for a number of years now. And now that we have the unit, we can really focus on this type of series. Now, of course, Oli recently moved into this space, so it's quite empty still. It's gonna take time, but when it's done, it should be a perfect deal. DIY space. So yeah, if you like the sound of all of that, make sure you do go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't done already. I've got a goal of 200k subs this year, so it'd be nice to hit that. The better the channel does, the more insane the project can get. But yes, I've already gone ahead and taken the under tray off, and I'm pleased to say we're already off to a good start because all of these T30s were completely immaculate. There was none of them that were stripped. But yeah, front of the engine, obviously this side with the gearbox. This is a DQ250, a six-speed DSG, which does drive pretty amazing. Has got a bit of rust here. Don't think that's much of a problem though. Got the sump of course, which looks like it has been resealed in the past, but thankfully there's no oil dripping off it. This does look a bit sweaty though, so I imagine there has been a leak somewhere. It's just a bunch of oxidization really, but it does look like that alternator up there is pretty fresh. Yeah, it's just a bit shinier than the rest of it, so that may have been changed at some point. Clamps are a bit rusty and also that hard pipe there looks a bit past it, but nothing that we can't sort. Sump plug looks dry. Even that connector there looks not broken, which is a good sign. I moved on to the subframe. Doesn't look like it's taken any impact. It all looks pretty straight. Dog bone looks original. This bush here doesn't have any aftermarket insert in it. it does look a bit perish, so we're gonna have to do something about that. Now, these lower control arms on a Passat B6 are made out of aluminium. Doesn't matter if it's an R36 or a normal one. That's just how they are. It's a nice upgrade for the Golf. And it's something I did do on that R32 I had. Now, on the end of the control arm, you've got this bush here, which from initial inspection looks completely cracked. That'll likely be the cause of that prior uh, MOT advisory. We've got the trusty pry bar here. Let's see how much movement we get. Yep, it's quite a bit there. This side has a bit less movement, but it's still all cracked in there. So they both do a change. CV joints all look fine. A bit of rust on the shocks there, but there's no leaking as far as I can see. Consistent on both sides. Tire does look like it's, well, it's not fully down to the marker just yet. They are hand cooks, changed in pairs as we can see. These brakes look exactly like Mark V R32 ones. Can't quite see the pad too easily behind these wheels. Discs look pretty fresh, so I imagine they were changed recently. Moving on to the exhaust, which as we know on a VR6 is one of the most important things because they sound awesome. And I'm pleased to say this is completely standard. Definitely from initial inspection anyway, the amount of silencers, we've got this big resonator. We've also got the back boxes, which we'll get to. The thing with these engines, it's very easy to make them sound annoying and droney and raspy. I did do the whole straight pipe thing with my R32 and I didn't enjoy it. It is impressive so far though. There's hardly any bodging going on beneath this car. It's just been used and enjoyed. Now through these gaps, the shell looks completely solid. There's not a speck of rust in there, but on the edges by the sill, we have got a bit going on here. So I don't know if this is a common spot on a B6. You guys can let me know. Yeah, I can't press through it just yet. It is pretty consistently matched on this side as well. And then nestled here, we've got the rear diff because of course this thing runs the Haldex unit. You can see the prop running through the middle there behind the exhaust. 
And if you check on here, you can actually see it says Haldex, which is nice to see. The exhaust looks like it's suffered a bit more with this general area. I think the rear of the car is pretty much where most of the quote issues are. Rear subframe has a bit there. We could drop this whole thing and powder coat it and do stuff like that as part of the restoration. Lower arms, I can just change those out. I did a similar thing to that Edition 30. The springs do look a bit newer compared to the rest of the stuff, so I imagine you did change them. Dampers don't seem to be leaking either, which is a positive. I think on this side, it looks like it's got a new caliper because the center bit there is white and the main bracket is in blue. Normally when you get a replacement caliper from like Euro car parts, they normally come unpainted. Then we've got these lovely back boxes, which also look intact. Have a big cut apart or anything like that. I just love the design that VW went for. It's like a if you know, you know kind of car. So that was a look at the underside. In all honesty, I think it's pretty great for a 15 year old car with 189,000 miles on it. Okay, so here we are in the engine bay looking at a 3.6 litre VR6. Yes, I know it says V6 right there, but it's just like an R32. It's a VR layout. It's basically a slightly bigger version of that engine and it makes 300 PS as opposed to 250 in the Mark V R32. It also says that on the lower part of the door when you open it, just in case you forget every time. There's more of a dark theme as opposed to the R32 which has a silver intake manifold. Another thing I've noticed is the oil cap is there rather than here. Now as we saw in the auction clips earlier the only real thing I've noticed with this engine is that it does have a bit of a rattle on a cold start. We'll try and replicate that now. Now this car has got 189,000 miles and it's probably on his original chain so some noise is to be expected. However when doing some research online I read that a bunch of R36 owners were having success with just changing out the upper tensioner and it helped reduce some of that noise on startup. It's located at the back of the engine just below where the throttle body is next to this coolant pipe and it utilizes a 27mm bolt. You also don't need any specialist tools to do the job but what you will find that is when you get a socket on there preferably a short one it will be very snug against these coolant pipes. Unfortunately I let the hard way because the coolant pipe snapped when I went to undo the tensioner bolt. That little small mishap cost me £25 and also a day because no one had it in stock anywhere. Now before putting in the new tensioner I was told to submerge in oil for some time beforehand. The idea behind this is to purge any air out. But yeah once you've got it back in torque it up to 40 newton meters. In addition to all of this I did an oil change as it wasn't any history with the car to say when it was last done. I opted for some Quantum 5W40 along with a man filter and a new drain plug. Now I've already got the airbox back in. I did have a good look around the back whilst it was all off there was a bit more access of course and I did notice that this rocker cover gasket leak over here as you can see does follow around the back so I'm going to get that ordered but also I'm going to get spark plugs in time for the next video because there's a chance that some of them may be drenched in oil I've already gone ahead and unplugged the coil packs though because we are going to crank it over I don't want to run the engine dry for the split second that it picks it up from the sump ultimately I am going to be doing the full time in chain at some point so it's not exactly a replacement for that as it's actually just one part of the process you've got the guides the chain itself they've all still done 189,000 miles right I just cranked it three times where the camera wasn't recording so I don't fancy doing any more we should be able to start here now though <laughs> Uh, that to me sounds a lot smoother. Bit of smoke from cooler burning off. I mean, you guys probably heard it even more clear than I did because I had the mic right there. But that on initial startup, the way it picked up the oil was a lot more. It didn't choke into life as such. Now at this point everything seemed good, so I was pretty happy with the job. But within a matter of seconds, a problem occurred. So I'll let you listen to that now. I'll give it a few. Okay, something just happened there. Okay, so that was a bit of a stressful five minutes, but I managed to get the Passat back in without it falling to pieces. Now, to answer that question of whether you should just change that upper 50 pound time and chain tensioner, I don't think you should. A lot of people on the forum say to do it. That's why I even had the idea to begin with. I truly think that that's putting more stress on the rest of the system now. The guides are probably a bit worn. And ultimately, I think if you're going to do this, just do the full time and chain job. It's a cool little test, but I don't really trust it. So what I'm going to end up doing now it's putting the old one back in. But ultimately, that's just how it is. It's a risk you take when you're working on your own car and you're following stuff on the internet. But I don't mind showing you guys the bad stuff as well as the good stuff. But anyway, that pretty much concludes today's R36 introduction video. I think we've covered a fair bit. You've got a good vibe for the car. Overall, it's not too bad for the price we paid. And yeah, we're going to get a bunch of items ordered in time for the next video. As mentioned earlier, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you want to keep up to date with it. Also follow my Instagram at tiahamza underscore. But yeah, folks, I'm going to go ahead and get the old tensioner back in. And yeah, I'll see you in a few days time for the next video. All right, a little bonus clip of the old tensioner back in. It's been about six or seven minutes. There's still no rattle like there was before. 
think sometimes you just gotta leave a car alone, folks. <laughs>